Hi y'all, welcome back to Grow Fit with Tammy. Today I'm trying something a little different, a vlog style video. I am gonna take you out on my balcony with me as I prepare it for this hot, humid summer weather we have here in Hong Kong. I have enjoyed so many months sitting out on my balcony and enjoying my little tiny garden space, doing work and making videos for you guys. Now that the summer months are approaching and I'm getting ready to leave for a trip, I'm setting up a solar power watering system, which I'm really excited to show you. I've used it for a season already and it worked really well. It saved me a lot of trips out into the heat. And I want to sturdy up this wall you can see out on the balcony here. I have reed fencing that I think really warms up the spot versus the white tile, but it's getting saggy. You can see it at the top there. And I'm, I have an idea on how I'm gonna sturdy it up and give some support to my ferns that are on bark there and a few small plants. So I wanna be able to add even more and make it even more lush and beautiful. But first I need a support framework. And I have this interesting idea. Let me take you on the balcony with me and I'll explain more. All right, here we are on the balcony and here is step one. I'm going to take these plants down. There's some of them are missing already and remove the reed fencing, which I have fixed rather precariously with just these three um, stick-on hooks. And some of them have held, some of them have not. After thinking about this for a little while, I came up with an idea that I would use something similar to chicken wire to actually use a drill, this is a rental property, use a drill and go in between the grout and put some small hooks and hang chicken wire and then put the reed back in front of it but make sure when I hung my plants to use the support of the metal frame. But when I went shopping for it I realized I was going to be left with a lot of jagged edges that I would have to sit and fiddle with with pliers to turn in and I saw something else. These. This is barbecue grill. Now here in Hong Kong, there's a lot of makeshift barbecues. The government around and the country parks will have an area and you purchase at the grocery store with your charcoal, a small one like this, a little grid that you place over the structure and you can put your chicken wings and your meat, corn on the cob. This one, however, is a bit larger and they're just about the width I needed but not the height. And I knew traveling back um, on our shuttle bus, I couldn't bring anything too large to cover this space. So I thought, all right, I'll do it in segments and wire it together. So when I saw this and it has this nice smooth metal edging um, and the right width, I thought I can do three of them, wire them together from the top and in between, leaving however much gap I'd like to cover the space. What do you think? Okay, stick with me. I'm gonna set it up now. All right, you guys, I am red. I have been working out here. I don't think it was for that long. I did not time it, but I got everything hung and I think this just might do. So let me take you closer. Up high, I'm not gonna climb the ladder again. I had helped put in two hooks and from that hung the metal wiring so that I could put my barbecue grills. And I wired those together, three pieces, and then I've hung what I had already. Now you can see two of them are empty. I'm going to have to look for just the right babies to put there. Um, this jasmine that I bought from my daughter for her balcony. She just moved into her own flat about six months ago and she's loving having her own plants and watching them grow just like mama. And this jasmine, when I bought it for her, she started to have rat issues. She lives right downtown in the city in Hong Kong. Um, just a couple floors up and her balcony is above a big fruit and vegetable market. I think rats for her will be an endless problem in the city. Not much to be done there. She tried traps, but anyhow, I digress. This jasmine was for her. So I've inherited it to keep it safe from getting nibbled as the rats were having fun doing. 
So I've got a jasmine. I've got this beautiful version of a pothos that was just so dark green and velvety. And here in Hong Kong, this one cost a bit. Oh, I hope I didn't just damage it by spraying water and neem oil on it. I think it'll be fine. I was just getting the, the drill dust off of them. So this one's here and I'm gonna see if I can't get it to climb the reed fencing. Now it's more a little more permanent for me while I'm here. And the only other one I worry about is this one here. It's gonna need an awful lot of water. It likes to stay in a little bit more dry soil from what I understand. So, so far so good. It's been here for about two months and doing okay, but we are getting ready to have some really intense heat here in Hong Kong. So I'm trying to up my game and beat it. Now, if the sun isn't too harsh, like for this one here, it was getting a little pale and this still might not be the best spot. I might need to move it to this side and maybe try some succulents on this end where it will get a little bit more sun. And this is the finished work, you guys, for today anyhow. I've got my ferns back in there, two different types, Boston and a maiden hair. Um, this is a gardenia. Hopefully it will bloom again for me. And down here, I've squeezed in some more water spinach because I just adore eating sauteed water spinach and garlic. So I'm trying to find more little nooks and crannies and see if it will grow and how well it would grow. Not as fast as my neighbor's rooftop. I've given her lots of my seedlings and there, I'll have to just go steal some from her for my breakfast. Let me take you around to the other side now. Okay, I should tell you, we are up on the 21st floor. We live in Hong Kong and our island is called Ma Wan. If you wanna look it up on Google Earth, Hong Kong, we live on Ma Wan Island, M-A-W-A-N. It's quite small, about 10,000 residents because they fit in 31 of these block towers. And there's a village just beyond that are only three-story little village buildings. And oh, I'd love to show you, there's a fishing village as well. There are people that live out on their fishing boats. They're the original residents of this island. It was just a fishing village. It was the last port that fishermen could stop and fill up on water before they went out for the day for, to get their catches. Now, I mentioned in my intro, I also wanted to show you my solar power watering system. It's a little drip watering system. It was a gift, and let me tell you, some people just get it right. Um, it was a couple that I did some jobs for. I worked for setting up their kindergarten here in Hong Kong with lots of plants and foliage because the kids cannot go outside there. It's just an indoor kindergarten. So we tried to make it as lush and tropical there. So they were kind enough to gift me with this for Christmas. It says it will water up to 20 plants. And without dropping my phone, I'm gonna take you out here to show you the power behind it all, which is this little box. It's really small. And this is my on off switch. Grabs the energy from the sun. And then you can see the black tubing coming down now it's not set up properly. I'm in a bit of a hurry. We have an emergency trip back to the States. Not the best time to fly with COVID, um, but nonetheless, I wanted to give my plants a fighting chance. I have someone staying here, but when you leave your plants to someone else's care, it's just not quite the same and that's fine. I, I realize that I will probably lose some, but she knows me and has watched me several times. So hopefully we can come back to our green plants. Here's my mint. So these will be on the drip system. This one's not plugged up yet. My rosemary and sage, I thought they looked so pretty together and I was running out of planters and just it's a space issue. We got a compact come together. Let's work together. And so far they're fine. More water spinach here that I cut and ate off of two mornings ago. Uh, these little flowers don't know the name but these have lasted me since Chinese New Year back in January and it is now a couple days till June and oh my time my time is on the dripper as well my cute little fountain I just enjoy so much my little ceramic fish having a, a fun little swim there and here's his friend oh. and I put a fern in there it's sucking up the water and it's doing well. Another rabbit foot fern here. I won't put this on the drip system because it uh, doesn't have a drainage hole. I didn't drill one in. And then just for fun, I have another bird's nest fern tucked in the corner. 
and a few more here that I'm still arranging. And here is my too tiny water bucket. I am going to replace this one. This is maybe two gallons. That's it just empties too quickly. So the water goes in there. It automatically turns on and off a couple times a day and waters all these plants. These succulents do nicely. I ended up with tons of palladiums and shared with neighbors. It's fun to be able to multiply your plants and give them away. This one I've been working with for more than a year, I think, and he's just not, he's not happy. And back to the beginning. And for the third thing I wanted to show you today is my hydroponic tower. Check out my video on how I set it up, what it's all about, and why I would put one out here. But here we go. This is my little tower. I have it up on a few bricks just so I can rinse my decking. I have little chihuahuas as well that have a pee pad out here. And then this is the water reservoir and you can see I ended up putting some yellow sticky paper to catch the little gnats and if you don't watch this every every day, couple days, come out and give it a spray. I use a neem, one to 100 neem and one drop of dish soap in here and I spray it uh, every few days. And that seems to keep any of the little white flies that tend to get in my lettuces and basil. And I just love basil. I need more recipes on what to do with dill. If you have good dill recipes, I've put it in yogurt and made veggie dips. Love that, but I still got plenty. The last of my lettuces, you can see how I've picked it all the way and it just keeps growing. This has been so much fun and I have filled so many salad bowls. I think I started with eight here and now I'm down to three and it's time to replenish. Basil, parsley, and more dill. So much fun, I love it. So you can live in a city or have a small amount of space if you're in a rental apartment. I can even grow this one in my bedroom window. Um, I don't get direct sun, but I get filtered sun all day long, and it was enough for greens. You won't be able to grow your peppers and tomatoes with, without the direct sunlight, but look how much we can do with what we've got. So if you're having problems and need some answers, I will do my best to help you. So feel free to leave any comments, questions down in the link below. I look forward to hearing from you, and thank you so much for your time as always. I love being with you here at Grow Fit with Tammy, introducing you to the little things I find to make my life just a little bit healthier, a little bit more calm, and my garden is definitely that for me. Very relaxing and soothing, calming. I can come sit out here, do some work, do my household admin, do some videos with you guys, and it's just so much fun. Live life to your fullest, hey? All right, till next time. Bye, y'all.